Good morning. So we're celebrating today the feast of St. John Vianney, the, the patron of, of, of priests. And, and Vianney lived a, a remarkable life. I'm not sure if he, if he washed his hands or not uh, before he ate, but he, uh, he was uh, in so many ways a, a heroic struggler for Jesus. He was born in, in the late 1880s, right in, in the countryside of France, right before the French Revolution. So in his early life, the faith went from the when he was born, it was the, the nation's religion. The eldest daughter of the church is what the French, French consider themselves. And then when he was sick, by the age of six, it was not quite illegal, but many priests and bishops were having their heads lopped off and the king had been deposed. So he experienced the church as a persecuted uh, lover of humanity. And he appreciated the heroism of the priests who would roam the countryside celebrating mass in, in secret so that people could receive the sacraments. He then gets drafted in, into the, the Napoleonic army. He had, by the, that point, the church was legalized briefly gets drafted in the army, goes to pray in a church, the army leaves, finds himself functionally a, a deserter. Fortunately, there was a, an amnesty, so he gets legalized again. But it is, you know, it's sort of this bumpy road. So he goes back into seminary, but he's old compared to the average seminarian in the history of the church. He's, he's in his late 20s and you know, he's, he's with these little kids studying Latin and they're making fun of him because he's not good at Latin. He struggled to, and that was the language that they wanted you to be able to test out of as you did your theological studies. They made an exception for him and he was ordained a priest and his pastoral, he was, soon after his ordination of a priest, maybe three or four years, he becomes the pastor of a parish in this now famous town only because of him called ours sort of a, a backwater if there ever was one and the people there could have cared less that they got a priest assigned to them you know it'd be like finding out it in franklin park oh saint john and paul is a priest and you're like you know yawn turn over and, and he loved jesus and they didn't you know he because they had because of the French Revolution, they had had a priest. They had had a priest for a while, and they they didn't miss it. And he would pray on his knees in front of the tabernacle for hours a day and beg the Lord for the conversion of his parish. And he'd go and walk around and get to know people and say, "Hey, come to church," and I'd be like, "Okay." And eventually, they started coming. And then eventually, you know, he started challenging them to be holy. Not to be blind guides leading the blind, but to be transformed. And there was resistance. To follow Jesus is a, can be a, a, a require some death. So they, there were allegations brought against him, and a petition famously went out to have him removed. And someone came to him with the petition because he was an extraordinarily humble man. And, he, and they said, look, you know, there's this petition to have you removed. And he said, well, give me a pen. Then he signed it. <laughs> and acts like that of, of just profound humility. Not, I mean, imagine if that happened to most priests that'd be like, you know, you would be upset. So, but he, he wasn't. And he became this great apostle of the confessional so much so that not only did it, his parish sort of become converted and going start to go to confession faithfully but he eventually started hearing confessions from people all over the countryside he became a bit famous by the end of his life hearing confessions upwards of 16 hours a day this is documented that he would hear confessions for 16 hours a day that leaves eight hours for every including in the mass and his other 
prayer, but and, and he battled literally the devil like would attack him. Supposedly the devil once told him, if I had two of you in the whole darn church, my kingdom would be lost. The enemy had an extraordinary awareness of the glory of what a priest did and what the mass was. He said if a priest was really aware of what he did at mass, he would die not out of fear, but out of love. Like if I really knew what I was doing, like if I was aware what was happening deeply, it would be so overwhelming as to kill me. Vienni, by the end of his life, had really made extraordinary headways into the hearts of his people, so much so that there was a new cemetery in the town because the first one filled up. And he knew his people, he knew every one of them. And he said, when someone talked to him about the cemetery, he said, it's not a cemetery, it's a reliquary. Because he knew that flowing from his ministry, his parishioners had become saints. So anyway, long-winded homily, obviously somebody I like talking about. What can we do? Well. We can pray for our priests. We can pray that that they might, we might follow the example of Vienni more in our lives. We can pray for more priests, and we can also pray for for this awareness of the grandeur and the goodness of our God and of our faith that Saint John Vianney had, that we might live for Him and Him alone. Saint John Vianney, pray for us.